All right, Stargate fans, the moment we've been waiting for is finally here. After an 18-month hiatus, the Stargate franchise is finally back on Amazon Prime Video in the United States. Just a quick update here as we celebrate the TV show's return to Prime, and why if you live in the United States and you don't own the show on physical media, this is absolutely unquestionably the best place to watch it. Let's get this out of the way first. Yes, if you live in the UK or Canada or parts of Europe or maybe some other places, you've already had access to Stargate on Prime Video through the MGM channel add-on. That costs you a few extra bucks each month. In the US though, we don't have that. Never have. So when Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, and Stargate Universe left the streaming service back in February of 2021, that was it. You had to try and find inferior copies on another service or just buy the DVDs and save yourself all this trouble. Actually, it was just after Stargate left Prime Video that Amazon announced it was buying Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer lock, stock, and barrel, including Stargate. I'm recording this in September of 2022, so it's been a whole 18 months without Stargate on Prime. That was even after the Amazon MGM deal closed back in March of this year. The companies have been completely silent on what they're going to do with the franchise. So Stargate has been off of Prime for so long that during this time, Amazon announced it was buying MGM for $8.5 billion. They went through the entire regulatory oversight process and eventually finalized the deal. Then there was another five months since then that we've been twiddling our thumbs waiting for some signal that Amazon even knows that it owns Stargate. So what do we have here? As of today, it's all 10 seasons of Stargate SG-1, five seasons of Atlantis, and two seasons of SGU. There's no sign of SG-1's two movies, The Arc of Truth and Stargate Continuum, on Prime Video just yet, though they can be rented for $3.99 each. That also goes for the movie-length cut of the 2018 web series Stargate Origins. You can still watch the animated series, Stargate Infinity, on here with the ConTV channel add-on, but you're not going to do that, are you? Stargate's return to Prime Video is great news for viewers in a lot of different ways. For starters, Prime has a far superior copy of the episodes than other streamers. These are all 16x9 widescreen episodes, with a higher resolution. It looks like they've been upscaled to something around 720p. These are the copies that air on HD broadcast channels in some countries. For SG-1's early seasons, Netflix only has the 4.3 version. And to make matters worse, they're still falsely listing all 214 episodes as rated TVMA for nudity, almost two years later. This arguably does real harm to the show's discoverability by new viewers, especially families who are looking for a sci-fi adventure show they can enjoy together. In case you're new to this, only the first episode of SG-1 has nudity. It was a concession to Showtime back in 1997, which the producers immediately dropped in order to make the family-friendly show they wanted to make. Netflix doesn't seem to care that every single individual episode has its own rating, usually TVPG or TV14. They just slapped TVMA on the whole show. Now I have to enter my parental controls pin number every time I want to watch Wormhole Extreme and Netflix tells me to watch out for all the nudity in Ergo. You don't have to worry about any of that nonsense on Amazon. Even better, in 2009, series co-creator Brad Wright went back and re-edited the pilot episode, fixing things like the visual effects, the score, and some uneven dialogue. He also recut Charay's nude scene to earn that TV-14 rating. I know, I know, Americans have all kinds of hang-ups about nudity you don't have in Europe. Put it in the comments, and remember, Brad Wright is Canadian. Anyway, this is the version of Children of the Gods that Prime Video has, the final cut, and it's the one I much prefer. Not so much because of the nudity, but for all the other reasons. Joel Goldsmith's original composition has been restored. MGM originally made the producers stuff in a bunch of score from the movie because they'd already paid for the rights. In this cut, Hammond is a little bit less in your face and closer to the wise and fatherly general we'd come to know in the series. There's a cargo ship at the end instead of that insanely large death glider that never appeared again in any subsequent episode. And Christopher Judge's entire performance has been redubbed. So Teal'c sounds more like he does later in the series. 
When they were originally filming in Vancouver in February of 1997, Judge was so cold that his lips were blue and his teeth were chattering in the dailies. Amazon's copy of Stargate Atlantis is also better. Right now, Atlantis is on Hulu in the US, and they're streaming the version that is edited with hard act breaks for commercials. This is when the screen and the score completely fade to black. Here's an example of the difference. Rodney, you have seven minutes. Rodney, you have seven minutes. Isn't that annoying? No, buy yourself the discs or watch this show on Prime. Nobody should have to put up with this in 2022. Last but not least, Stargate Universe hasn't been available to stream anywhere since Hulu's license expired last year, at least not without ads. All three shows have been available with ads on Pluto TV in the US since April of 2022. But if you have a Prime subscription, again, watch it there for the best experience. Now, the $64,000 question, how long is all this going to last? You might be watching this video in the future, hello future, and saying to yourself, this show isn't on Amazon, what is this guy talking about? Well, the truth is that MGM licenses out Stargate to all these different services under fixed and finite terms. Those terms vary from streamer to streamer and from country to country, so there's really no telling how long the franchise will remain on Prime this time around. It could be six months or a year or a lot more, but the fact that Amazon just bought all of MGM for its film and television library suggests, Bezos willing, that it might stay for good this time. Over on Netflix, SG-1 is going to reach the one-year mark on its current license at the end of November 2022. We'll find out then if Netflix will re-up or if the show will be leaving that service. Meanwhile, this October, Atlantis will reach the one-year mark since its most recent license renewal on Hulu. And if you're having trouble keeping up with all these changes to where Stargate is streaming, we've got you covered. Go to gateworld.net slash where to watch, even if you live in the future. We'll keep this page updated with which shows are on which services in the US. Elsewhere, check your local listings. I'm just one guy and I can't keep up with what Sky and Stan are doing. Keep it locked right here on GateWorld and our website for the latest Stargate news. Subscribe now if you haven't already and check out GateWorld.net to see the latest headlines.